So we're here at Mai Tai in beautiful Maui, Hawaii. Uh, a great tech event, or great tech event, a great kite event with lots of techies. And I'm here with James Lindenbaum, who just sold Roku to Salesforce for $250 million. And you are going to give me some great advice on how I can grow and scale my company to have an equally fabulous exit. Uh, spend lots of time at the beach, kiting, I think, it's really important. Um, yeah, well, so, um, I don't know, you want to ask specific questions? Yeah, I need to hire engineers. Can you Hiring explain engineers. to me? And actually just great talent. You know, how do you find great talent in a really hyper-competitive market? Well, I think the truth is that the, um, the best talent is already happily employed, always. So it's really hard to just go out hiring um, sort of the normal job process. So depending on who you're trying to hire, sometimes it's really useful to just find out who the really key players are in your space or in that sort of function that you're trying to hire for and basically go over them. I mean, I think as a founder or um, like a senior person in the company, you really it's sort of your obligation, especially in the early days when you're building um, the core team, to go out and find really the high, high quality talent. Um, and you pretty much have to do that yourself. Personally, you recruit people, get them excited about the company, get them excited about the mission, and sort of reel them in over a long period of time. I think um, it also really helps to hire people who have also good networks. And for us, a lot of our best hires also brought in a lot more really good hires later, so you sort of start to get a snowball effect over time. Um, so it's important to sort of encourage people to do that, and hire people who, will, who sort of have that that uh, mentality. Okay, now I want to hear about the craziest thing that ever happened at Europe. Craziest thing that ever. Other happened. than being sold to Salesforce for an obnoxiously large amount of money. That was a pretty crazy thing. Um, craziest thing. Well, we did have a really huge sort of pivot. Like um, after we'd already raised our Series A, we had a lot of momentum. Things were going along really, really well. Um, but we felt like we didn't really have product market fit, even though lots of people were using the product. We felt like maybe they weren't the right kind of people. They weren't maybe people that were going to provide us with a scalable business model. Um, and we decided we had to change substantially what we were doing. And um, it was hard because, you know, we just had a whole momentum in one direction. People were writing books about like, the products that we were making, but we decided we kind of had to go in this totally different direction. Um, so it took us a while. We probably wasted maybe six months sort of trying to do both at the same time before we realized we had to focus more. And we made like a really hard pivot from what was basically like an online web editor, IDE kind of thing, to like a full platform, um, what we wrote today. And uh, we just did it really over a long period of time. Um, Really well, like gradually, incrementally. And if you were going to tell a 22 year old just out of college who's thinking about starting a company, the number one piece of advice, what would that piece of advice be? Uh, go for it, I think. Don't wait. Um, don't wait at all. I think now is, I mean, always, but especially right now is a really good time to start companies. Um, it's juicy. It's so juicy. There's so much innovation, there's so much stuff happening, there's so much opportunity, there's a lot of capital available right now. It's just, it's a great time to do it. You can only live on ramens for so long. That's true. And it's usually when you're 22. So you have a That's, true. That's true. Yeah, high risk. High risk, high reward. Right? Like kiting. Kiting. Damn. Well.